Okay. Hi, this is Beekeeper Trish. This is another class for beginning beekeeping. This is all about getting your bees. Um, I'm going to segue to the PowerPoint because it helps me keep my thoughts collected and I really have some awesome pictures. Come on, wake up. You can do it. There we go. From the beginning. So, one day in 2015, it was almost the end of June, my daughter came flying in the house. Mom, there's a swarm of bees outside on the pine tree. And we had just seen some friends who had a swarm of bees on their pine tree. And so I knew that you could just take your bare hand and a gardening tool. The veil is optional. Clip the branch they're on, put it in a cardboard box, and then go get some bee gear later. And that's just what I did. And the rest is history. I have a website where I have lots of stuff that's information for new beekeepers and stuff about alternative hive styles if you want to try something other than the traditional double deep setup. Um, if you're local, I have bees and bees and honey for sale. Okay, I'm on Facebook. Sometimes I post. And I'm on YouTube. Well, you're on YouTube too, so you know that. And if you're local, here's some of the spots that I'm at. All right, that's enough about me. Oh, almost enough. I have 15 honey-making hives. Actually, I have 14 right now, but that's okay. We'll get back to 15 soon enough. And that's plenty for keeping the farmer's market and my other customers happy. And then I sell 15 overwintered nukes in mid-April to early May. And that's definitely plenty for me. And through the year, I raise queens. Those are some pretty queen cells. I enjoy beekeeping. Okay. This is a continuation of a prior... 20 minute video on how to get everything but the bees. This is how to get the bees. Okay, so what is a package of bees? I don't have a picture because there's lots of great videos on YouTube, but I'm just gonna say it's three pounds of bees in the queen. They were put together about a week before, put on a, you know, a semi, and then shipped to wherever you meet the beekeeper to pick them up. All right. Installation, yeah, definitely immediate and it's dramatic, but you gotta realize something about getting your new bees if they're in a package or in the nucleus hive. As far as they're concerned, this is a similar situation for them as if their tree fell down and rolled down the hill. In the case of package bees, it's several hundred miles. But then as soon as the entrance is opened, they take a minute or so where they just sort of like well, really? I could get out? And then the bees that can fly do fly, and they're going to fly and orient around where they are, and this may be a 20-minute deal. So the sooner you can get the bees that are not flying in the box with the inner cover on, the sooner they're going to start fanning, and that's what you'll hear is a fanning sound, and it's pretty loud, but they're just fanning their wings because they're emitting a smell, and this smell calls the, the flying bees in. So the nurse bees are saying, okay, the front door's over here, and the, the big sisters, the foragers-to-be, are saying, okay, all right, hold on, i got to figure out some landmarks first, and then I'll come in, and that's what you'll be seeing. So they're not defensive. For the most, it's, that's actually pretty rare because they're busy. They're busy doing their bee thing. All right, be aware when you're told the package bees will be here, blank. This is a guesstimate. If they're being honest, they'll give you a range. If you're taking a day off work, be aware. This is potentially, they're gonna be way later typically than you expected because it depends on mother nature's schedule. It depends on when the bees get out of the almonds if it's an early spring, they'll be done sooner. If it's a really wet, yucky spring, they may have to stay longer. And then it's going to depend on the weather in the south because then the bees that were in the almonds are shipped to places like Georgia or uh, Florida where then those bees raise new queens. Those new queens and the bees are what you get after Mother Nature's had her way with all of these schedules. So you're getting a guesstimate of the arrival. You're going to get mites and small hive beetle. For the most part, small hive beetle is not an issue. They will enjoy the pollen patty you give them. So maybe don't give them, I just give them like a quarter of a pollen patty when I feel the, the hive could use support. And I'll talk more about managing your package bees in the next class, which will be next week sometime. 
You're definitely going to need mites, and I'll talk about that in the third class that's coming up. Well, this is the third class, but this is like level one, third class. This will be like level two. Level three is like that class. Anyways, it's, it's not coming for a while to talk about how to manage mites, but I do have a way that I recommend that's been working for me. And you're going to get mites, and you're going to need to deal with them. Okay, the seller is a distributor. They're a beekeeper, and they want you to be happy but they don't know anything about these bees. They don't really necessarily know how many mites are in there. The people selling the bees worked hard to keep the mites low, but sometimes they fail. Some years are it's really hard to do to keep those mite numbers under control. All right, pickup is inflexible. Those bees are in their mesh container. Oh, here's a pro tip. When you get them, bring a spritz bottle with you with um, like just a little bit of sugar in the water and kind of spritz, not so it's totally covered with water, but a fair amount, they'll be thirsty. And that helps them a lot, actually, before you put them in your car and transport them. Um, or when you get them, if you had them shipped. Pickup is inflexible if you're picking them up. They, they can't hold them for you. And you really should install them immediately. Not if it's dark out. Like, if you get them and it's about to be dark, okay, they'll be fine just sitting. But even if it's raining, you should still install them the next day because they will they will definitely just use an umbrella. You'll be fine. And your, your bee suit, you'll be fine. Okay, you do need to be aware. If you buy one hive and you think, oh, should I get a package or a nuke? Get a nuke. Because package bees have a higher chance of failure because you have one shot with the queen. If something's wrong with her, that's it. The, the hive is doomed. If they don't have any comb yet, if they don't have any eggs laid yet, they, they can't make a new queen. So there's a maybe one in 10 chance that's gonna happen. There's a lot of moving parts between getting this queen mated and having her succeed in your, your, your apiary. And a lot, most of those moving parts have nothing to do with you. The other option for getting bees comes in two flavors. It's called a nuke or nucleus hive. It will have five frames with bees of all ages, from forager to just emerged nurse bees. He will have brood in all stages, from egg to cat brood about to emerge and help reinforce the numbers. And it will have a laying queen. The bees that are in the nuke are, in a reputable cellar, the daughters of that queen. So, this means you have to bring home a baby hive. The seller will have one or maybe more options for you. Sometimes sellers say, bring your own box. You put the frames in in their bee yard. You drive your box with the bees back home. Don't put them in the trunk. Mm -mm. You don't want them to get hot back there. So you'll want a few more instructions about how to make sure they have enough airflow and all that. A screen bottom board will be fine, but I, yeah. So this is an option. Your seller can guide you through it. Another option is you bring home the nuke in a cardboard carrier and it's all sealed up. There might be a few bees hanging on outside. Just wear your suit when you're driving home. You will move the frames from this cardboard box into your hive when you get home. Another option that sometimes is offered instead of the first two, or maybe in addition to, is that you borrow a transport box and you put down a deposit. When you bring the box back, you get the deposit back. Okay, there's a fair amount written about installing a nuke. Same idea where as soon as you open the nuke, the bees are gonna be they're going to be looking to, to figure out where the leaks in the roof are, where the front door is. Again, you're going to, after about five minutes, have a bunch of bees in the air. The sooner you can get those frames in the hive, the better. Because then those bees will start fanning and they'll start calling the bees in the air to the hive. You don't want them calling them back to the nuke box. You can, after you get the frames out, just flip it over, bang on the nuke box a few times. Don't bang the nuke box against the hive. Hold the nuke box steady and bang on it like a drum. Drive those bees out. Uh, don't keep it near the hive. The bees will smell the queen was in there and try to move back in. So it's better to try and shake those bees out. If there's a few left in there, take it away for 20 minutes, bring it back later and try and brush the bees out. Get that inner cover on 
as soon as you can to help the bees focus the smell coming from the front door. Okay, but they can fix their own issue. What does that mean? If, when you're installing, you kill the queen. Or if you got a dud queen. Or if she was somehow killed during transport or damaged during transport. There will be eggs and young larvae ready to be groomed to become a queen. And they can fix their own issues. If there was a lot of heat damage during transport, well, there's a lot of baby bees coming on that's going to be replacing the bees who might have been damaged. However, they can have brood disease in the comb. They can have more mites and more small hive beetle. This is, I would say, less common than packaged bees losing their queen, but it can happen. The delivery day can also float, especially if you're getting a southern nuke. You can sometimes set it on top of your hive and open the entrance to your, to your nuke box and let them fly and then install them a day or two later if it's just not going to be good enough weather for that. You only have a couple days. You cannot wait more than that. They will, they will start to decide they need to swarm because their hive is too small very quickly. So you have maybe a couple days. Nukes come in two flavors. A southern nuke. That means it was put together in the south right after the queen has been checked to be successfully mated in a good brood pattern. They're driven up on a truck. So the delivery date is going to depend on mother nature and the mating dates and all the good weather in the south. But you, you have to pick up your nuke. You have to go get it. So the seller is again a distributor. They don't know anything about whether there was a mite problem. They don't know anything about whether the queen may have been poorly mated or what her personality is like. You will have a choice of queen race. And you will, again, be buying from a beekeeper who's a distributor who wants you to be happy. And they are going to work with you, but they don't know the history of this, these queens in the same way as somebody who raised their nuke and sold it to you. And that's a local nuke. And the queen was raised from bees who survived. It's hard to breed from a dead queen. So survivor queens might have slightly improved brood rearing tendencies compared to bees you bring in, but really southern queens can do fine. I'm still here, sorry, taking some, a drink. This, if you buy a local nuke, you're buying it from the beekeeper who raised the bees. They're not going to have the advertising budget. <laughs> They're not going to have the volume either. They're going to have maybe five, maybe two for sale. Often, they're not available till June. But you can tailor delivery for the day and time that works for you. Just a little recap, things to think about when you're getting a package that can be some minuses, can be some pluses. And a southern nuke, <clears throat> some differences there, where you have brood comb and... I'll be with you in a minute. Okay. And then you have a local nuke where you're buying a survivor queen because she was raised from queens who survived. It's in an email to Amelia or a text. Um, and it is something that you can schedule with more freedom. Okay. When you buy a package, you might end up with a package with a dead queen. Talk to the seller beforehand about what you should look for and what happens. Talk, if you're buying a nuke, you might see that there's problems already. You should look at what does, what does a good, good brood pattern look like. You should, if you didn't see the nuke frames when you were buying the nuke, cause they were all, all um, buttoned up, then take pictures of each frame once you get it home. So you should talk to the nuke seller ahead of time about um, what kind of problems could you expect and what happens if you have these problems? Because the beekeeper sometimes does interesting things. It's not possible for any bee seller to guarantee their bees. And they all are beekeepers and want you to be successful. But people who are selling you a package or a nuke from the south, I mean, they can replace things, but they, they didn't do all of the steps that brought you those bees. Okay, where can you get bees from? Check your local 
Beekeeping Club's website. In pre-COVID days, you could go to club meetings and ask around, but, you know, nowadays uh, there's virtual ones and it's a little more awkward to ask those questions. Okay, we're going to talk for just a few minutes about the bee races. What kind of bee should you get? Now, these are races. They can, they're just like humans where they have different color, but they're still bees, just like humans come in different colors. And unlike humans, bees are expected to have certain traits if they have a certain color. These bees are from my apiary. One is an Italian looking queen and one's a Carniolan looking queen. I have a variety of queen colors in my apiary. All of them are gentle and they come from mothers who were, who were uh, pretty good at making honey. And there you go. Whatever flew over the fence is their father. Italian and Carniolan queens that you buy, they are gentle. That means if you have a frame that's an inch up because you're trying to lift it out or trying to set it back in and then you drop it, you might get a few feet bees that fly defensively at you, but it's not going to be most of the hive. And they'll be good honey producers because they're bred to do that. The queens who weren't like that didn't get to contribute. Italians have a reputation for early spring buildup. Carniolans have a reputation for going through winter with a smaller population and then having explosive population growth. Italians have a reputation for being more likely to rob weaker hives. Carniolans, as part of their explosive population growth, growth have a reputation for being likely to swarm. Italians have been found to be hygienic when they're Italians from Italy. Carniolans, because of their smaller population in the winter, are said to be more likely to dial down their food needs if there's a dearth or be better able to handle less honey in the winter. What's it mean for you? Either queen can do great in Ohio. And as long as that queen was raised with proper care and she wasn't damaged in shipping, she'll be, she'll be phenomenal you'll be able to accommodate to an explosive population growth or to a hive that is big going into winter, you'll be able to do some changes to your management to handle that. There's some pretty hot titles of kinds of bees, Russian bees, bees, survivor bees from Vermont, locally adapted. That's, I guess, what I would sell because I just sell whatever survived and made honey and Mite biters, varroa sensitive hygiene. Yeah, it doesn't matter. This is a fun thing to play with after you have um, raised some of your own queens and know how to make a split. It's not critical to your beekeeping success. You need a queen that was carefully raised that isn't swarm crazy. And some of that's genetic, but for the most part, you're going to get queens who aren't swarm crazy. That isn't defensive and bees are bred to be gentle. You don't have control over these because that's whatever she came with. There is no miraculous miraculous mite immunity. You're going to have to manage mites. And I have videos about that coming in the pipeline. Success with the hive, the queen and everything else depends on good mite control, good stores, and a good queen of any kind. You have control over number one and two. So mostly success with the hive depends on you, not what kind of queen you get. I'm just going to say a few things now about studying up. Beekeeping classes are a great way to hear about beekeeping, to see people's thoughts about your beekeepers in your area. Um, you, the Ohio State Beekeeper also has, Ohio State Beekeeping Association also has a web-based introductory beekeeping training program, totally online. It's not on YouTube. It is every facet of your beginning beekeeping from putting frames together to inspecting a hive to getting ready for winter it's great there's like 50 plus videos that are fairly short definitely check that out if you like to learn by watching videos if you like books <clears throat> there's books i like backyard beekeeping by kim flottam there's a number of other books get them from the library first or they're not that expensive and you won't be sad if you have more than one 
There's podcasts. They're not specifically devoted to teaching you beekeeping, what you need to know before you get the hive, though you'll find some beginner posts. It's just great to hear about bees, and it's a convenient format if you're driving along or doing the dishes or whatever. There's some websites. Most websites are pretty short when they talk about beginning beekeeping. Here's a list of some, oh, and I should have put mine on there, that has more than one page about starting beekeeping. And if you go to chickabuzz.com, there's a list of these websites, and I think that's probably it, maybe a couple more, that have more than just one or two pages about beginning beekeeping. There's YouTube. YouTube is a mixed bag. This, of course, is an awesome YouTube video. Um, oh, okay, I'm done. I don't have any particular YouTube names here, but I do on chickabuzz.com. So thanks for listening and happy beekeeping. And so much to learn. It's kind of fun. All right. Take care. Have a good one and goodbye.